Whether you're new to Sonos or you're looking to expand your setup, choosing the right speaker can be tough. With six speakers, three soundbars, two subwoofers, and a range of architectural products in Sonos' current 2024 lineup, all coming with various price points, where do you start? Well, hopefully this video will give you everything that you need to know to make a more informed decision. Now, I'll be covering each speaker, their main pros and cons, and who we'd recommend them for to hopefully help you guys find the right Sonos speaker or speakers for you. Hey guys, Louis here from Smart Home Sounds, and if you've caught any of our videos before, then you'll know that we've created a lot of Sonos content. And while we do sell Sonos as well as many other brands, I'm not here to try and sell you the most expensive setup possible. Rather, we know the struggles of trying to find the right fit for your space and common questions that our community has around Sonos. So we've created this guide to help you all out. And actually, I think I could save some of you some money too. The key things that we discuss in this video will most likely be relevant to any future iterations of these products should they come along, but now's a really good time to subscribe to make sure you stay up to date with any future Sonos launches. Now, we're always first to review the latest products from the brand, and we'll be keeping you guys right up to date and very much in the loop with everything that you need to know. If you do decide that any of the products in this guide are right for you and you want to support us, then make sure you head to smarthomesounds.co.uk to make the most of our extended six-year Sonos warranty plus our dedicated tech guys are always on hand if you need any more personal advice or support pre or post purchase. Okay, on to the products then. Now I've split this buying guide up into three sections for you guys. So we've got wireless speakers, portable speakers, and home cinema. Though I will also briefly touch on the Sonos architectural range at the end. So feel free to use the chapters to skip ahead to any section or to get the best understanding of the whole range. But in the meantime, sit back, relax, and enjoy. So there are three wireless speakers in Sonos's 2024 lineup. Well, there's technically six, though we'll come back to the hybrid portable options in a minute. But the prices range from £159 up to £549. But for now, I'll move the portables off the desk to focus on our three out and out wireless options. So we've got the Sonos Era 100, the Era 300, and the Sonos 5. Now you might have also seen the Sonos One or One SL previously, which is this one here, but these have now been discontinued, though they are still fully supported by Sonos if you do have one. The Era speakers are fairly recent additions to the Sonos lineup, sitting below the Sonos 5, and we do imagine that sometime in the future we'll probably see this upgraded to a Sonos Era 500 to complete the set, but for now, it still very much has a very valued place in the lineup. Now, all of Sonos's wireless speakers can be used as standalone speakers, can be stereo paired for a more spacious surround sound, and can be used as rear surround sound speakers with a Sonos soundbar. Essentially, we have a good, better, best here, but there are a few key points for each speaker which help them sit apart. The Era 100 is the next generation of the Sonos One and One SL, and is the most affordable speaker of the three, coming with an RRP of £249. Now, there are some great pros for this speaker. It's nice and compact, meaning it works well in almost any space, plus it can be wall-mounted up high for a discreet listening experience. It has a dual tweeter setup, making this a stereo speaker, so it gives a nice wide soundstage, despite that compact form factor. Connectivity-wise, we've got various options, including Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, voice control with Alexa or Sonos Voice, plus there's a handy line import which can be used to connect to a turntable, computer or other audio source. Just bear in mind that you will need to purchase an adapter to use that. The only real downsides are that you might need a more powerful speaker to fill a larger space and there's no support for Google Assistant. For me, the Era 100 is the perfect option for secondary spaces like your bedroom, kitchen or study and it makes a great entry speaker into the Sonos lineup. Now they're also the most common option for surround sound rears in a Sonos home cinema setup. The step up to the Era 300 is really more of a leap. And actually, this speaker really sits in its own subcategory of wireless speaker. This is Sonos's first Dolby Atmos speaker, which has six drivers which fire sound from the front, from the sides and top for a spacious stereo sound which supports both spatial audio and Dolby Atmos. There's lots of clever tech working to make this happen, which we do go into in a lot more depth in our full review. But essentially, this offers a completely different type of listening experience to any of Sonos's other speakers. The Era 300 comes with a price tag of £449, and as you can see, it offers a more unique appearance to accommodate all of those drivers. Similarly to the Era 100, we get a more modern aesthetic, and it also offers the same connectivity options. 
Clearly, the main pro for this speaker is the immersive spatial audio experience it gives, but it's also a more powerful speaker than the ERA 100 to fill a medium to large space, and these make for very impressive surround sound rears with the upwards firing capabilities. In terms of cons, the design isn't for everyone, and the larger form factor does require more of a dedicated listening space, so you don't want to be squeezing this into a bookshelf and restricting its performance. It's also a sizable step up in price, and some might find that two ERA 100s grouped together, which will cost you around about £50 more than a single ERA 300 will fill your space better. It all just comes down to the experience that you're looking for. For me, the ERA 300 is for those of you who will make the most of the Atmos capabilities and will enjoy the more unique listening experience. Two paired together for a dedicated spatial audio setup sound awesome and for rears, these are my top tier option for immersion, hands down. Now it's also good to know that the ERA 300 is currently the only home speaker that supports Dolby Atmos music from Apple Music outside of Apple's own HomePod. Our final option for wireless speakers is the Sonos 5, coming with an RRP of £549. Released a few years back in 2020, the 5 sits at the top of the range and is the most powerful speaker Sonos currently offer. With six Class D digital amplifiers powering three woofers and three tweeters, the 5 offers a wider stereo soundstage, deep, rich bass and an overall room fitting sound for a larger space. Besides the powerful audio performance, other pros include a dedicated 3.5mm line in port which doesn't need an external adapter. We've still got Wi-Fi connectivity, AirPlay 2 and Spotify Connect 2. Now in terms of potential cons, we don't have Bluetooth on the speaker, which you may or may not be bothered about. Now there are also no mics in this speaker, so we don't have built-in voice assistants, but it is compatible with any Amazon Echo or Google Assistant products. The size is also something to consider. While it's less restricted than the ERA 300 and can be placed within a bookshelf, it's still a bigger speaker to accommodate. I would recommend the Sonos 5 for those looking for a room filling performance, which is closer to a traditional hi-fi speaker without the bowels and whistles of spatial audio or Atmos support. It's not as common as rear surround speakers, as for a lot of spaces they would be overkill, but for the right room, could make a killer home cinema setup. Now it feels right here to mention TruePlay Tuning, which is Sonos' unique room optimization feature, which can be used to make sure that you're essentially getting the best performance for your space. Now for most of these speakers, you will need an iOS device to help measure the acoustics of your room and the software will then optimize the speaker to suit. Now the exception to this is the ERA speakers, which also offer a quick tuning process, which uses the microphones in the speaker to offer a basic version of TruePlay for those without an iOS device. Okay, moving on to the next category and an area that Sonos is tough to beat on is their hybrid Wi-Fi portable speakers. And we've got three options again here. So we've got the Sonos Roam, we've got the Roam SL, and we've got the Sonos Move 2. All three are designed to work seamlessly with your Sonos system at home with Wi-Fi connectivity, but then give you the option to take your Sonos on the go with Bluetooth connectivity. The Roam and the Roam SL are essentially the same speaker with one exception. The SL doesn't have any inbuilt microphones and therefore doesn't offer voice control. Now the Roam comes in at £179 and the SL for £159, so a good way to save 20 quid if that doesn't bother you. But there is a slight catch. Sonos portable speakers with a microphone, so the Roam and the Move 2, offer auto true play, where the speaker will detect when it's been placed somewhere new and optimize the performance for that space, so you will miss out on that with the Roam SL. In terms of pros, both the Roam and the Roam SL are compact portable speakers, which offer a 10 hour battery life, a lightweight and durable with an IP67 rating and boast one midwoofer and one tweeter for a decent sound performance from such a small footprint. Now it's not the most impressive performance, but it's perfect for chucking in a rucksack or adding another room of audio to your home. I actually use mine quite a lot in the bathroom. Now the only real downsides to this speaker are that the multi-function button on the back does take a little bit of getting used to and you can't use the Sonos app without Wi-Fi, so you can't see battery percentages and things like that when you're on the go. For me, I think that the Roam is a really handy addition to a Sonos home, giving you extra flexibility with filling more of your rooms with audio, though I would suggest purchasing the Sonos charging dock to have at home to really make the most of it in that space. Now it's also great for taking out into the garden and pairing with a Sonos soundbar, so you can listen to any sport or things like that when you're outside. Of course, it's not the most powerful speaker, but then they've not really been designed to be, and that's where the Sonos Move 2 comes in.
The Sonos Move 2 is the latest entry into the Sonos lineup, replacing the original Move, which was Sonos's first ever portable speaker. Now the Move 2 sits in the more heavy duty portable speaker category, so it's definitely not the sort of thing that you want to chuck in your backpack. Rather, it's been designed to move from room to room, outside and on the occasional weekend trip away. Now the more powerful portable option from Sonos comes with an RRP of £449, so it's quite a step up from the Rome and Rome SL. The main pros for the Move 2 include a 24-hour battery life, dual speakers for stereo sound, versatile connectivity with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, AirPlay 2, voice control with Alexa and Sonos voice and lining connection for external audio sources. Move 2 can also be used as a power bank so you can charge your phone via that USB-C port. It also has a fairly sturdy design and an IP56 rating to give you a little bit of cover with the elements. In terms of cons, it is pretty expensive and it's not the most portable design, though it will of course depend on what you're hoping to do with your Sonos portable speakers as to whether this is an issue or not. Oh, and like the era speakers, there's no Google Assistant and you will need to purchase a separate line-in adapter if required. The Move 2 is a great choice if you want Sonos in multiple rooms of your home, but don't have the budget for multiple Sonos Era 100s, for example. Instead, this speaker can be taken with you from room to room and then out into the garden for an extra zone of audio. Now, it's far more powerful than the Era 100, though it does offer a completely different listening experience to the Era 300. On to sound buyers then, and again, we have three choices here, ranging from £279 up to £899. Now we have the compact entry model, which is the Sonos Ray, a step up to the Sonos Beam Gen 2, and then the flagship, top of the range, Sonos Arc. Now all Sonos soundbars can form as the base for a wider home cinema setup if you were to add a subwoofer and or rears and all benefit from Sonos's true play tuning to optimize performance for your space. All three also have some handy features including speech enhancement which boosts dialogue and night mode which reduces the louder crashes and bangs if you're listening late at night. Kicking off with the Ray then, which comes in at £279 and is Sonos's entry into the soundbar market. It's capable of handling Dolby Digital surround sound and has two front-facing tweeters and midwoofers, so you would be able to tuck this into a media unit or a recessed shelf without impacting performance. You just need to connect it up to your TV via optical. In terms of pros, this soundbar is a simple and pretty affordable way of upgrading your TV audio and delivers crisp, clear dialogue. Now, when it comes to connectivity, obviously we've got Wi-Fi and you can use AirPlay 2 or Spotify Connect to stream your content to it as well. On the other hand, we don't have any support for voice control. There's no Dolby Atmos support and it doesn't offer the most room-filling performance for a larger space. Generally, I would recommend the Ray for smaller spaces, such as a bedroom or snug, and it pairs best with smaller TV so a 42 inch or smaller. If we step up to the Beam Gen 2, this is a very capable Dolby Atmos enabled soundbar with an RRP of £499, picking up the Watt Hi-Fi Award for best soundbar under £500 in 2023. It's still a pretty compact solution, which works well in the majority of spaces, but is best suited to TVs 55 inches or smaller. Anything larger than that, and you might find that the soundstage doesn't quite match up with the visuals. Now the Beam connects to your TV via HDMI eARC, or ARC if you've got an older TV, and it supports Dolby Atmos. Now there are four midwoofers and one tweeter in this soundbar, and two of the speakers are angled outwards, so avoid placing this in a recess or unit. Now, while there are no dedicated upwards firing drivers in the Beam, it does offer simulated height channels using psychoacoustic technology. In terms of pros, we love that you can get a decent Atmos experience from a smaller and fairly affordable soundbar, but the absolute best thing about this soundbar is the clarity and center channel, which pushes surprisingly close to the performance of the premium Sonos Arc. Of course, we have AirPlay 2 and Spotify Connect as well as voice control. In terms of cons, some people might miss out on the no Bluetooth, there's no support for DTSX, and the simulated height channels doesn't compare with a soundbar that has dedicated upwards firing speakers. Truth be told, this is one of my personal favorite Sonos products, especially when it comes to value for money, and I would recommend it for those of you who want an impressive sound performance to enhance your movie nights and general TV viewing. Thank you. 
Our final option in this category is the Sonos Arc, a premium Dolby Atmos soundbar which steps up to a price tag of £899. Now the Arc is a much wider soundbar than the Sonos Beam and is perfect for larger spaces and under TVs larger than 55 inches. Inside we've got 11 Class D digital amplifiers with 8 elliptical woofers and 3 silk dome tweeters. Now there are dedicated sideways and upwards firing speakers for a full Dolby Atmos effect bouncing sound off the walls and the ceiling. With the Arc alone, we get a 5.0.2 setup. Now, as I mentioned, the beam pushes close to the Arc in terms of vocals, but the overall sound performance is a considerable step up from the beam, as it should be given the difference in price. In terms of pros, the Arc offers a well-balanced sound performance with crisp vocals and rich, impressive bass. The dedicated up and sideways firing drivers help to deliver a very immersive performance from a single unit. And if you have the budget, there is the flexibility to upgrade to a 7.2.4 setup. The cons are that it's a considerable step up in price from the Beam and for smaller spaces, might be a little bit overkill. Oh, and there's no Bluetooth again for anyone who might find that that's a sticking point. On to the subwoofer options then, which can be added to any of the soundbars that I've just mentioned, but also paired with any of the Sonos wireless speakers too, if you're looking to bump up the bass on a stereo pair or something like that. Now we have two options in the current Sonos lineup, the Sonos Sub Mini and the Sonos Sub Gen 3. Now both connect wirelessly to your chosen setup via the Sonos app and will help take the load of the lower frequencies to free up extra performance in your soundbar or speakers. The Sub Mini is the more compact choice of the two with a price tag of £429. Having been released more recently, it has a more modern design with this sleek cylindrical shape and you can place this almost anywhere in your space and get a good performance. Though we do recommend placing it in the corner or on the same wall as your soundbar if you can. It has an acoustically sealed cabinet and dual six inch woofers in this center tunnel here, which is designed to move air more efficiently and maximize the bass performance. Now both subwoofers offer no rattle or distortion and we've tested this with a glass of water on top previously and seen no ripples. Now this is down to the woofers facing inward to create a force canceling effect which neutralizes cabinet buzz. Now it is worth noting that both subwoofers state that they offer a frequency response of 25 hertz, but as the smaller subwoofer, the sub mini isn't going to offer quite the same level of bass that you can feel in your chest. The pros are that it offers clean, tight bass and a dynamic low-end performance, plus it's a more affordable entry price for adding extra bass to your setup. The cons are that it might not give you enough oomph in larger spaces so you can't pair two sub minutes in a single setup. This sub is perfect for small to medium sized spaces and in particular is a great partner for the Sonos Beam Gen 2. The Sub Gen 3 then is essentially the Mini's bigger brother. It's a larger, more powerful and more capable subwoofer which delivers impactful bass that you can feel in your chest. Now as a result, it comes with a higher price tag of £799, making it a natural choice to pair with the Sonos Arc. In terms of pros, the Sub Gen 3 obviously offers a seriously powerful performance, but you can also lie it flat and even tuck it under a sofa to have a more discreet appearance. And you can take things one step further by pairing a second Sub Gen 3. Now on the other hand, it is an expensive addition to your Sonos setup and you might find that the Sub Mini offers a good enough performance for you at almost half the price. We'd recommend the Sub Gen 3 for those looking to really level up immersion with impressive bass and particularly if you watch a lot of action movies or listen to bass heavy music. So we've covered all of the different components needed to create a Sonos home cinema setup, but it can still be a little bit tricky to work out which pairing is best for your space. So first things first, we've created a whole host of content on our channel, including in-depth comparisons between your different options, a look into our recommendations of pairings with the Beam and with the Arc and lots more. So please do feel free to check out that content for more help. Now in general though, there are two standout options which make a good starting point. First is the Sonos Beam Sub Mini and two ERA 100s as rears, which has a total RRP of £1,426, so just under that £1,500 mark. 
This would be my go-to recommendation as a very good home cinema performance, delivering immersive audio for your space. If you want to level up, then swapping out the ERA 100s for ERA 300s rears will add upgraded immersion, especially in the side and height channels. The other go-to solution is the ARC Subgen 3 and ERA 300 rears, coming in at £2,596. This is a fantastic Atmos setup with the high and side channels of the 300s and ARC working together to place you right in the center of the action. Now you can level this up by either adding a second sub or swapping the ERA 300s out for fives, though either of those upgrades are really only recommended if you've got a pretty large space or you've got the money to splurge and want the best of the best. Otherwise, you could take the rears down to the ERA 100s and even drop down to the sub mini if you want the height channels from the ARC, but are happy with a decent sub performance and good rears. Again, there's plenty more content on our channel to check out, but hopefully that helps. Now the final products in Sonos's lineup are the architectural range and the Sonos port. Now again, we have dedicated content on these, so I won't dive too deep, but for a brief overview, the port is essentially Sonos's versatile streamer, which can also be used to bring non-Sonos Hi-Fi equipment into your setup. So if you've already got an amp and speaker setup, but want to make it smart and bring it into your Sonos system, then this would do that job. We then have the Sonos amp. Sonos's amplifier, which can be used to power a pair of passive speakers, and these don't have to be Sonos. So if you have a pair of passive bookshelf speakers that you want to bring into your Sonos ecosystem, then this is a good solution. The amp is also used in a lot of other spaces to power in-ceiling or in-wall speakers, and you could use these as the rears in a Sonos home cinema setup. Finally, we have the Sonos in-ceiling speakers, in-wall speakers, and outdoor speakers. So if you're looking for a more discreet audio performance or want to expand into another area of your home, then you've got that option within the Sonos range. Now, if you're looking at a larger Sonos project or just need a little bit more personalized advice, then make sure you reach out to our tech guys who would be more than happy to help you out. Or of course, just get down in the comments. Our community is really great at helping each other out. But in general, please don't get too stuck on the perfect setup for your space. As Sonos is a multi-room flexible system, quite often you can relocate speakers to another area if you later find that you want a different performance, or of course, to upgrade to the next step up. So hopefully this video has helped you out guys and I'll catch you all in the next one.